Okay, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Doki Doki World of Dreams. Now, <laughs> I'm not even gonna mention it. Kind of had a bit of a hiccup in the recording earlier. Stupid freaking job coach had to call me. But now, again, <laughs> let's dive right back into the fight. So, last we left off, we had a little bit of um, altercations. Last we left off, we dealt with the bully at school. She seems to be turning her life around. She seems genuinely sorry for what she did, which, I mean, I'm sorry more be, but this is kind of a very optimistic view of how bullies are handled. They aren't just gonna... <laughs> you really aren't just gonna stand up to them once and bam, they turn their entire life around. They're just gonna continue bullying them more, but whatever. Yeah, you'll see a notification that says I can skip because I've already seen this because, you know, fill recordings, but I won't do that. So, yeah. Sucks that I can't pause my recording. I have to... Well, whatever. It's dark outside when I wake next, but something's wrong. I feel terrible. My stomach is doing loops and gurgling. I look at Meiji's phone. 4.39 a.m. I try and calm my stomach with deep breaths, but no dice. I rush to the toilet and the contents of my stomach pump come up. Last night's egg sandwich must have been bad. Or the melon soda. Eventually, there's nothing left. I cough and spit up what remains in my mouth. Damn, why today? Meiji? Meiji, are you okay? Meiji? Hey, Mom. What happened? Are you okay? Yeah, I guess that egg sandwich last night was just bad or something. I head to the sink and wash my mouth out and splash some old cold water on my face. Meiji's mom walks over and puts her forehead to mine. You do feel a bit warm. She rummages through a drawer beside the sink and pulls out a digital thermometer. After a while, she takes it out. No fever, but I'm still not comfortable sending you to school. That settles it. No school for you, young man. It's just food poisoning. That doesn't matter. You need to rest and let your body heal. If you're feeling better tomorrow, you can go. It's probably a bad idea to talk back to her more on the matter. Plus, she might get suspicious if I want to go to school. <laughs> Sweet. That's cool. This isn't an excuse to goof around. I fully expect you to get plenty of rest today. Go back to bed now. Okay, Mom. Also, by the way, yes. I mean, <laughs> just food poisoning. Dude, I suffered that shit. It ain't pleasant. Trust me. It's not just food poisoning. That shit sucks. She rushes me back to the bedroom. Stay here for a bit. She rushes back out. While I'm waiting, Meiji's dad comes in. Meiji, is everything okay? Yeah, sorry for waking you again, dad. <laughs> Try not to make a habit out of it. You both still have to get up in the get up for work for, in an hour. I'll have a bit. I'll try. Where's your mom? She went downstairs to get something. I swear, that mother of yours can be quite a handful sometimes. Is that so? Meiji's mom comes back with a glass of pale green liquid. Drink this. She hands it to me, then turns back to her husband. How am I a handful, huh? Dear, you know women didn't mean anything by it. I know what you mean. Mean a girl. But you know me, I'll always worry about our kids. I watch as Tatsuo hugs his wife. I take a sip of what Meiji's mom gave me. Oh, this ginger ale, I didn't know they had that in Japan. My own mom used to give me that whenever I got a stomach bug. But Meiji's parents moved her from the hug. These two. So cute. Now go to sleep, sweetie. You need your rest. We'll call the school later and let them know you won't be coming in today. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Dad. See you later. Love you, Meiji. Love you, too, Mom. Good night, Meiji. Night, Dad. I lay back down and turn off the alarm before going back to sleep. <sighs> I wake a few hours later with sunlight coming in from the window. Meiji's mom must have opened it this time. The clock says 7, 12 a.m. It's about time you woke up. We have got to get to school. Nope, not today. Ah, oh, crap. Here we go again. Again? What? Oh, wow. Are we sick? Once again, I rush to the toilet. Damn it, why did it have to be today of all days? Wait, couldn't this be a good thing, though? Changing things, I mean. I don't know. I go to the kitchen. On the counter, there's a note and a couple of cans of chicken broth. Meiji, please boil up some of these and, sp and sip on it during the day. Hopefully this will help. Love, Mom. That woman. What a worry word. I like her. I grab a mug. Looking over, I see that Meiji's mom had put broth in a small pan and left it on low already. I'm surprised she didn't make porridge. <laughs> That's irrelevant! I put some of the warm broth into the mug, then open another can and pour it into the pot. There's too many variables here. Today was the day Sayori tricks me into joining the club. She's going to bribe me with cupcakes. My mouth waters at the mention of cupcakes, but is quickly countered by rumbling in my stomach. There's nothing we can do about it, right? We're sick. We can't do anything about it. The doorbell rings. A muffled voice calls out. Meiji, are you in there? Hurry up or we'll be late. I head to the door. Opening it, I peek out. Sayori's waiting there expectantly, bag in hand and jockeying in place like she's ready to run at a moment's notice. Hey Sayori, sorry, but I can't go today. I have a nasty case of food poisoning. Mom told me to stay home today. What? Are you okay? 
I feel terrible, but I'm not contagious. I just need a day to let whatever's inside me pass. I'm sorry I won't be able to walk you to school today. No, 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 it's okay. You focus on getting better, all right? I'll stop by when club is over. I will. After I finish this off, I'm off to rest. All right. Get better soon, hear me? I will. Take care. You too. Sarah makes her way down the hill. I head back inside, rinse off the mug, and place it next to the pan. Well, since we have some time, we can finish those specials and the OVA, but then we should come down here for the rest of the day. All right, sounds good to me. I head back upstairs, turn on my laptop, and proceed to spend the next couple of hours watching the specials and the OVA. When that's done, I see it's around 9.30 in the morning. The little bit of broth I had isn't sitting well, so I rush to the toilet again and do what needs to be done. After I clean up, I turn off my laptop, and grabbing the school bag, carry it downstairs to the couch along with a blanket. I get myself situated on the couch, and after grabbing another mug of broth, sit down. You can sleep if you want, or read with me. I pull up the first issue of Perfect Girls and turn to the first page. This is manga. No way I'm gonna sleep, but if you pull out that other book, I'm sleeping. Fair enough. I read slowly so Major can get the plot as well. It starts out as, tip, as a typical Gacy slice of life. The four girls were all friends who enjoyed all of the cooking and baking. While their tastes and food differed considerably, one thing they all agreed on was that, was that parfaits were the superior dessert, dessert and they thoroughly enjoyed making them together. In their last year of high school, these four girls left their respective clubs and decided to start the cooking club up again. The volume ended with the four girls looking over their new club room, one of the school's auxiliary kitchens. Ooh, this manga is good. This mangaka is actually pretty darn important, and we'll get to that in a later day, but trust me, it's incredibly important. I reach for the second volume, but my stomach has other plans. When I get back, I fill the mug up again and sit back down. Thought so far? I'll be honest, it didn't look like something I normally read. I'm more into action and isekai, but this looks like looks like interesting so far. Just slice of life is kind of relaxing. Agreed. Let's switch to Portrait of Markov. Why are you so insistent on reading that book? It's about it's a book Yuri enjoys, and we need to make friends with all of them. Same with Parfait Girls, just an important manga to Natsuki. I don't exactly like the idea, but fine. I have a somewhat basic idea of the story, but wow, this story is good. The main character in the book, named, Fuji, named Fujiko, is a high school girl who, after the disappearance of her father, finds out that she has a twin sister who lives in a smaller rural town in Hokkaido. Hokkaido. The first scene was of her inner thoughts while she took a bullet train from the Sapporo airport to a small town called Yuna, where she's greeted by her younger sister named Masai. Even in that first chapter, I imagine Yuri is the protagonist and can easily picture her being like that. Fujiko was wearing the entire train right there, how to best introduce herself to the sister she never knew she had. In contrast, Masae was very upbeat and friendly, acting more as an older sister to her new sibling. The town they lived in had one school that catered to every grade from elementary to high school, one small library, a few small restaurants, and one grocery store. As she's exploring the town one day, a car driving away from a bunch of police cars ran into a pole near her. An older woman got out and stumbled over to Fujiko, muttering something about a third eye before clutching at Fujiko's shirt, leaving a bloody handprint on it. The police officers asked her, what the, asked her what the woman said, but Fujiko was too traumatized to speak, only shaking her head. After she calmed down, she said that the woman didn't say anything other than something about a third eye. Police officers let her go at that point. I look at the clock and it shows that it's just past 11 in the morning. Why don't we take a bath? Agreed? Great, but first, I grab my laptop again. I take it upstairs and place it in its hiding place, charging underneath the desk underneath an old bag. I then head downstairs. With Meiji's help, I set up the bath and warm water begins falling the tub, fall, filling the tub. Filling, yeah. While the tub is filling, I grab my phone and Bluetooth speaker, put on some soft Japanese music, and lay down in the bath. When the tub is full, I turn it off and lay there, eyes closed. Ten minutes pass. So, what's the plan now? I'm not sure. Right now, I just want to get through today. I'm not sure what's going to happen, and I'm a bit scared. <laughs> no, scratch that. I'm scared out of my skull. Alright, dude, calm down. We can get through this. You've been helping a lot, so let me try and help you. I'm sorry. I just have no idea how to handle this situation. I love the music. Ba -na -na. I mean, this is the original track from the DLC. I know that, but it doesn't stop it from being awesome. At least I think it's from all these. I think it might be from one of them all, but I don't quite remember which one. Ba -na 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 -na. Scoot you over a bit. The entire first day of the game won't happen now because of my foolish mistake in eating that 
Stop! Oh, I almost hurt that. These eyes. You didn't do anything wrong. You're helping me reconnect with Sayori, and while well, I'm not sure I would have done everything you did, you've been acting as much like me as possible. <laughs> Thanks for that. I feel a bit better. Not physically, but I feel a little more prepared. Good. So, what are you thinking about? Penny for your thoughts? <laughs> Man, I don't know. I'm wondering if the scene from the first day will go similarly if we go to the club a day or two later. If it does, we're all we're missing is a day, but I don't know if Monica already knows where she is now or not. What do you mean? Here's the thing. On the first day, Monica signs the club a task to write poems to share. Since this is a dating game, all the player does is choose 20 random words that can appeal to Sayori, Yuri, or Natsuki. The others actually write poems. Monica's poem on the second day kind of implies that she knows her world is nothing more than a game. I don't know if she knew it was a game from the start, or if she discovered it between the first and second day. Wait, only the three? Why wasn't Monica there? She doesn't have her own route. What? Why? You'd have to ask the creator. Honestly, it's her story that made me the most upset. Don't get me wrong, I feel for the other girls and struggles other girls' struggles, and I'm not belittling them. But Monica, she deserves happiness just as much as the others. Ooh, now I see. I can almost feel a smirk. <laughs> what? You're going after Monica, aren't you? Not that it's any of your business, but now that I'm here, I'm not going to neglect her. I don't want to neglect any of them. I don't want to see them die. I hit the side of the tub angrily. Oh, crap. Oh, well. <laughs> Sorry about that. Freaking... God, I really need to get a goddamn recording booth. I could barely handle it when they died on the screen. I think I'd break down if I saw it in real life. Well, semi-real life. This isn't really... <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Do you always get like this when you're sick? Meiji sounds concerned. I take a breath and a splash of water on my face, forcing myself to calm down. Not always, but how would you react if you knew what was going to happen in the next couple of days and only had one chance to change things? I can't say I understand completely, but I do get why you're nervous. Luckily, you're not alone. I may not know much about this game, but I can try and help however I can. And if what you say is right, we can try and help get Monica's help. I certainly hope so. The two of us lay there for a half an hour in silence, listening to the music. After that, I get out, drain the water, and dry off. After using the toilet again, I head back out to the living room after putting in some clean pajamas. I don't know about you, but I'm too tired to read anything. Constantly throwing up is thro tiring out this body. I feel it too. Let's sleep. I turn on, the, turn on the music again and lie down. The couch is incredibly comfortable and I find myself quickly drifting into unconsciousness. I wake later. No dreams. That's unusual. I normally have dreams whenever I'm sick. Oh crap. Once more to the breach! After I'm done, I come back and lie back down. Meiji wakes up. Hey, we okay? That sandwich really messed us up. Ugh, it sucks. More rest then? Yeah. I yawn and close my eyes again. My music is still going and it's soothing me. I'm just about to sleep when someone opens the door. Someone walks in. Did Meiji's mom come back early from work? Shh, be quiet. Really? What the hell? It's probably still asleep. Hey, what's your mom doing there? No idea. Let's listen. I think this is Yuri, if I'm not sure, if I'm if I recall correctly. Are you sure about this? He looks exhausted. Do you think it was a good idea to come here? His voice sounds more mature and deeper. It couldn't be, could it? It's Yuri. Where do I put these? Never voice that harsh, but has a higher cutesy sounding voice. Cutsy. Yeah, exactly. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Yeah, this is an earlier version. There is a new update for the game out now. Fortunately, I don't have that yet, so you're gonna have to. You're just gonna have to suck it up and deal with this because I'm playing this one, alright? It's basically, the new version is just a few background updates and a few spelling error, spirit, spelling and grammatical fixes. That's it. It's story itself and nothing else about it changes, so I might as well just play the broken version. <laughs> well, if, if I'm ever playing this again, of course, I'm gonna be playing the updated version. Put them in the kitchen. I'll show you where. I don't move. Three pairs of feet walk past me into the kitchen. Wait, only three? Got a sneaking suspicion on where the owner of the fourth pair is. I gently open my eyes. A little bit of Monica in my life. <laughs> oh, there. Yes, we wake up to a face full of Monica. That's, I mean, that's not exactly what I want. I would rather wake up to a face full of bun, but I mean, hey, this works too. If you're a Monica, <laughs> you're getting your dicks out now, aren't you? The Monicans in the audience just gonna. <laughs> <laughs> oh, am I kidding? I don't have an audience. <laughs> nah, but for real though, like all of my seven viewers who actually give a crap about this series, thank you. Thank you very much. It means a lot. I'm glad I can 
put a smile on your face for however short it is. What the hell? No doubt about it. That's definitely Monica. She's way too close. I moved back only to hit my head against the couch's armrest. Ah! Damn it! You okay? You okay, Sam? Yeah, just startled is all. Ah, I'm so sorry, Shizu-san. I didn't mean to startle you. I rubbed the back of my head as I sit up. Uh, no. It's not your fault. <sighs> so you are get out of here! It sounded angry than I meant it to Sam. Oh, Meiji, you're awake. Are you okay? Are you feeling any better? A bit confused right now. What's going on? <laughs> well... The other two girls walked in. I've seen Yuri already, but who's the blonde girl? Wait, the ribbons on her head and the twin tails and her flat um, posture. Natsuki's a blonde? I turned to Sayori slowly. Sayori? Explain. Um, well, I wanted to get you to join my club today, so I was going to invite you, but then you got sick. I couldn't wait for you to meet the club, though, so I brought them here. Whoa, I did not expect this from Sayori. Me neither. This is an unexpected move for her. It's too aggressive. Meiji, be mindful. Then let them make the first move. So you brought them here instead. Are, are you mad at me? Rub my eyes a bit, look, I better smile. No, I'm not mad at you. You're my bestest friend. Even if I did, I couldn't stay upset for long. Uh, are we bothering you? No, it's alright. I slowly sit up. Um, it's a pleasure to meet you all. I'm Shizu Meiji, Sayori's neighbor and best friend. It's a pleasure to meet you. Sayori's telling us nothing but good things about you during club meetings. Seriously, Sayori, this sick boy is who you choose? So much for a nice club atmosphere. You didn't tell me the other girls were this cute dude, I mean... Wow. Oh, that's strange. What is it? The fact that these incredibly cute girls showed up to my house? Well, that too, but I meant this conversation. It's nearly identical to the way it goes in the original game. Alright, let's see how it goes. I don't add on that Major's following script I don't add on that Major's following the script a bit too. Better keep an eye on that. <laughs> you can just ignore her when she gets ready. So I says that quietly until my ear is introspective with the other girls. Anyway, this is Mirabo Janatsuki from Class 3C, always full of energy. And this is, Kosuke, is Yoshika Yuri from Class 3E, the smartest in the club. Don't say things like that. Hmm, what is it? Maybe it's just me, but Yoshika-san kind of seems like the type who has a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Minamoto-san. She does, but don't think any less of her. She's extremely intelligent, and we're going to need her help to see if we can let you take control of her for a bit. And you already know our club president Asuno Monica from Class 3D, right? 3D? Really? Of course she has that class. <laughs> Subtle! <laughs> <laughs> yes, nice to see you again, Shizu-san. Sorry again about the head. Are you okay? Does it hurt still? Well, that's new. Uh, no, it's not hurting me as bad as before, and don't be sorry, it wasn't your fault. I smile back at her. My heart's really going doki-doki right now. She really is very beautiful. Wait, you guys know each other? We were in the same class last year, but we didn't really talk, like, ever, right? <laughs> Hardly ever. Well, we're going to have to fix that. Um, Meiji, do you feel well enough to have some cupcakes? Cupcakes? I pan hand on my stomach, taking a deep breath. You know, I do feel better than before. A cupcake does sound good. I've only had chicken broth today. I'll get them! Hey, I made them! I'll get them! Sorry, I get a little too excited. Uh, okay, so in case any of the voice, girls' voices are sounding similar, I do try to differentiate them. Um, especially my Natsuki and Sayori voices tend to sound similar, but my Sayori voice is probably by far- And that and maybe Monica, those two are probably the best voices I can do. Yuri, decent, and Natsuki, well, you heard it yourself, it sucks ass. <sighs> Which is unfortunate, but, you know. Alright, quick check, on, uh, check on the, uh... So over here. Sorry, sorry I'm going silent. I'm being a moron, checking my Discord in the middle of recording. Goddamn, silly me. 
Now it's getting Sayori head to the kitchen. Sayori practically giddy with excitement. Um, she's a son? Is it okay if I make some tea as well? It might help you feel better. Assuming you have some kind of tea set. Dares have a tea set? Sayori knows where all the tea stuff is. We haven't moved it since she was last year. Oh, of course. You, oh, of course you can. Sayori knows where our tea set is. Thank you, she's a son. Well, along with Monica. What should I ask her? Hmm. I've got it. So, Asano-san, I'm curious. How come you decided to make a new club? You're pretty talented already. You could be a high-ranking member of any of the major clubs at school. Weren't you pretty high up in the debate club last year? Monica sits a respectful distance away on the other couch. Well, if I'm honest, I hate big club politics. She picks up Portrait of Markov and looks it over nonchalantly. While I was in that club, there was nothing but arguments on budgets, publicity, and preparing for events. And don't get me wrong, the debating part of the club is fine and all, but I wanted to form something based around something I enjoy and try to make something special out of it as well. And if that encourages people to get into literature, then I'm already making that dream into a reality. Subtle, Monica. <laughs> Real subtle. Seems like she knows already. I'm just gonna have to keep taking your word for this, aren't I? Yep. Well, that's certainly an admirable role. Sorry, I said you're a great leader, and from what I've heard, and from what I've heard of you and remember about you from last year, I believe it. But how come your club doesn't have any, have more members? I mean, I get you're still kind of new, but I'd have thought you there were more people in our school for liter into literature than just the four of you. Well, you have to understand, not many people are willing to put in the effort to, st to start something brand new. Especially with something that doesn't grab your attention like literature. It's a lot of work trying to convince people that you're fun and worthwhile. But that just makes school events like the Culture Festival that much more important. I'm hopeful we can grow this club before we graduate. Admirable, and I hope that dream gets realized. Monica starts to reply, but not to be enter straight hand. Okay! Are you ready? I have no idea. I guess Monica's side with Clint. I can almost see a flint is rising over his shoulder. Ta-da! Not doing that. I'm sorry, I suck at gasps. Let's kill us the fall off the tray. I haven't seen the cupcakes in the game. They were described as cats, but the craftsmanship I see beyond is is beyond anything normal high school senior can make. The cups, cupcakes themselves are soft and white, with the multicolored frosting having been poured on expertly. Oh, oh god damn it! Yawning during recording again. I, it's it's fucking 3:30 p.m. right now. Why the hell am I yawning? The image of cute kittens were probably painted on with some sort of brush made for that purpose. The whiskers are made of chocolate icing and bits of chocolate sprinkles make up the ears. So cute! I had no idea you were this good at baking, Natsuki. <laughs> well, you know. Just hurry up and take one. I didn't make them to be stared at all day. Sarah grabs one first and immediately inhales it. <laughs> Going curvy on that ass. So good! I grab one, then look over at Natsuki, who's sneaking glances in my direction. She? Waiting for us to take a bite? Yeah, she is. I'm making sure I'm looking over the cupcake. You know, this cupcake is pretty professionally made. How long have you been making one of son? Long enough to know how to make good pastries. Fair enough. I finally back down. Wow. The game did not do this justice by a long shot. The cupcake itself is light and fluffy, but not overly sweet like some are. The frosting. Ugh, I hate this cliche, but in this case, melting in my mouth is a, is a perfect description. The chocolate and vanilla flavors don't clash, but blend well with each other. Suddenly aware of how hungry I am, I devour it very quickly. My, my cupcake! Be careful, dummy! Slow down! I smile sheepishly as I place the paper wrapping down carefully. I haven't had much to eat today, only the broth that mom left me this morning. I grab a napkin from a small stack that Sayori brought in and wipe my mouth. Although I think one is enough for me for now. I hope it's okay if I take a few for later. You what you want? It's not like I... I've definitely heard this before. Make clear or anything. Baka. You're right, she is a classic student and I have some impressively great logic to answer. Told ya. I humbly accept these gracious offerings to my poor wounded stomach. I take the award. Yuri returns, carrying a tea set. Here we are. I'm surprised though, this tea set is nearly identical to the one we keep in the club. Hold up. You give a whole tea set in the club room? Hold up! <sighs> Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea have to enjoy a good book? <laughs> Don't let yourself get intimidated. Here he's just trying to impress you. I'm not intimidated. I am impressed though. You get your kind of smile. <laughs> That's not. He looks away, looking a bit insulted. I mean, I meant that, you know. It's alright, Yoshka san. I do enjoy a good cup of tea. And I'm sure my stomach could use it too. I'm glad. Especially today. 
We're not bothering you too much, I hope. No, not at all. I'm feeling better than I did. Even if, if all goes well, I'll be at school tomorrow. As the air begins to pouring tea, Meiji speaks up. This isn't normal. Not normal at all. Four girls willingly coming over to a sick boy's house? Not normal. I mean, I'm not surprised Sayori came over, but why these other girls? Not that I mind, but still. No argument here. But then again, this is supposed to be a dating sim game. I wouldn't be surprised if their affection stats are higher than the normal intimates. Either that or the script had to improvise. When Yuri's done pouring the tea, I take a cup, blow on it, and sip. The taste isn't too strong and feels soothing as it flows down my throat. Ah, <sighs> that really hit the spot. Thank you, yoshika san uh, Um, th think nothing of it. Oh, by the way, there's no need to stand on ceremony with us. It's perfectly alright to call everyone by their first names. Not mine! Patsuki, don't be rude to a sick person. It's fine, I'm flexible, Minamoto san Okay. You all can call me by my first name too if you want. Um, so, Meiji, what are your literary interests? She indicates the book on the table. I assume you read manga? For a long time, and I still do. That's what he said something perks up. Just like in the game, she looks like she wants to say something, but keeps quiet. However, I've read a few other things as well. Like, I told Sayori recently, I read Sense and Sensibility just for a change of pace. And then yesterday, I picked up this book at the bookstore. Oh, the portrait of Barkov. I've already read a bit into it. It's a good read so far. I've read some of J.R.R. Uh, Tolkien's Middle Earth fantasy books, and I even read C.S. Lewis's Chronicles of Narnia and his Space Georgia. Well, it's good you're trying to expand your horizons. How about you? Well, let's see. Your choice is the memory cup with the finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. You mentioned Tolkien earlier. His books are a, life are a long time favorites of mine. The level of creativity and craftsmanship he put into that world amazes me to no end. Same with other books with similar world building. But what impressed me more about that book series is how he was able to tell such a human story with such, within such a vast world. I agree. Even in manga, there can be complex worlds and incredible world building. I've even taken a stab at creating my own world, and I've come to respect those who do it a lot more. It takes a lot of intelligence and foresight. You're not in agreement. But, you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. It's pretty amazing how an author can take advantage of the reader's lack of imagination and throw him for a loop. I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Coincidentally, we have the portrait of Markov. This one is one of my favorites. Well, don't spoil it for me. <laughs> I won't. First time experience of a book without knowing the plot is always the best. Horror? I didn't expect that from you, Yuri. Especially for someone as gentle and caring as you. I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. So real horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Uh, as opposed to physical horror? I mean, that makes sense. Those th those types rely on cheap scares. Exactly. Ugh, I hate horror. Oh, why's that? Well, I just... <sighs> I see you guys start over to me first for a second. Almost as if she's asking for backup. I get where you're coming from, Lina san I have a, lo a love-hate relationship with horror. Anytime I watch anything related to horror, I have to sleep with the covers over my head for the fear of the monsters I know are not there. Mind and emotions are two different aspects of the human psyche. We can know that ghosts and monsters don't exist, but our emotions tell us otherwise. Even then, I still find myself drawn to horror when the mood strikes me. Exactly! Well, except for the acting like a kid part and hiding under the covers. That's right. You usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? It gives me that idea! You left a piece of scrap paper behind last called meeting. I like reaches into her blazer pocket and pulls out a scrap of paper. Wait, she isn't going to say anything about the title? We'll give you permission to look at it! I have to find out who it belonged to. <laughs> your cupcakes, your palms, they all scream cute. Just like you! So he slides up behind Natsuki and puts her hands on her shoulders. I'm not cute! Sorry, I cut Metamoto some some slack. Eh? There are a lot of people who think being called cute means they're not being taken seriously. Apple Slayer is halfway boy. I'm sorry, Natsuki, I didn't know. Forget it, it's fine. Metamoto san, you write your own poems? Eh? The question seems to disarm her a bit. Well, I guess, sometimes. Why do you care? I just ask because I do on, because I do on occasion. It's quite an interesting change of pace. I don't have many poems, but what I do have, I'd gladly share with the club for critiquing. I'd also like to see yours if I can. N no! Color comes to her cheeks. Really? How come? You wouldn't like them. You sound so certain. How do you know that what I do and don't like? I pick up both Parfagles and Portrait of Markov. If I can be reading both of these and enjoying them equally, what makes you think I won't enjoy your poems? 
I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities, and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. I guess it's the same for Yuri. It's a shame, though. I was hoping to get people's opinions on my po own poetry. It's not something I do a lot of, but when I do, it's fun, and I would love to improve. Oh, I wanted to read everyone's poems, too. After a few seconds of silence, I clear my throat. <clears> Throwing <throat> to Monica, I hold up my hand in an, an imitation of the gesture Monica would make in the game. Okay, Monica, I have an idea I want to, I have an idea I want to run past you. I think we're thinking the same thing. I don't doubt it. Oh, why don't you two just make out already? It's obvious you like her. You really want me to kiss her while I'm still in your body? Huh? No! Well, there you go! I have an idea, everyone. Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then, next time we meet, we all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Um... Yeah, let's do it! Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will help us get all a little more... Help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, Meiji? I'm gonna give you a knowing look. She's being as subtle as a brick through a window. Well, considering I never said... No, I freeze. All the girls really came unexpectedly. You know what? That is a good idea. And I'd love to contribute as your newest member. Your eyes light up. Even Natsuki's. Really? Yes! I'm so happy! Sayori wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey, Sayori! Can a puke? Tap out! Tap out! <laughs> Sorry. You're not just trying for the cat cakes, right? No, not at all. They're a good selling, uh, they're a good selling point, I'll give you that, but I do want to try something new. Uh, Sayori seems to enjoy this club, after all. So let's make it official. Welcome to the Literature Club. Huh? Monica attended? And He's left-handed. You asked me to kill a guy because he... Because he has facial hair. Because he has facial hair. Smoke. <laughs> Smoke is right, Woods. And he's left-handed. Sorry, I love to give up. <laughs> Sorry, Mikey. No, there's a pe no, there's a piece of paper in her hand. I take her hand and shake it. The paper is slipped into my hand. Thank you, Madame President. As we release hands, Monica asks me something new. Sayori Beans! Sorry, I, I just get into an EDLC type mood. Hey, Mickey. Yeah? As I already mentioned while we were coming here that you've read Sense and Sensibility? I raised an eyebrow. Yeah, I have. Why? I was just wondering if I could ask your opinion on something. Is that okay? This? Wasn't something that was part of the game? See, you're already changing things. It's been a while since I've read the book, but sure, I can try. <laughs> well, it's just about Edward keeping his engagement a secret from Eleanor. Was he right? I, say, I still say he should have told Eleanor. But Natsuki, I keep telling you he was an honorable man. He didn't want to dishonor his family name. Guys... Uh, as I see this, I get the distinct impression that Monica isn't just asking about the book. It might be that she wants my opinion on secrets. Like the one she's keeping from her clubmates. Well, it's a tough question to answer if I'm honest. On the one hand, Yuri, you're right. He was honor-bound to his engagement to Lucy. But you're also right, Minamoto-san. You probably should have told Eleanor, but remember that he isn't perfect. Edward was pretty shy and didn't really pursue Eleanor that much in the beginning. If it, it's the imperfections of the characters that make them all so intriguing. I mean, I wouldn't enjoy manga or light novels so much if the main character was completely OP. Unless it's done in an interesting and unique way, like the cautious hero light novel. I finish and notice all the girls are looking at me, but especially Sayori, who looks completely dumbstruck. Oh, uh, sorry, didn't mean to go on a tangent. No, it's okay, thank you for your- thanks for your opinion. I guess when you put it that way, it kinda makes sense. They still should've t said something. It's a slippery flaw, by the way. It's a slippery flaw. Yes, it is. But it was standing up together in the end, right? <laughs> yeah, there is that. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's somewhat unusual meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Looks like we're wrapping up the day soon. That's good. I, I'll wrap up this day and then I'll call it quits because I gotta take the dog for a walk anyway. Monica looks up for me. Meiji, I really, really look forward to seeing how you express yourself. And get better soon. Wink. I grin and salute. Will do, Madame President. I begin to clean up. Oh, let us do that. She grabs the tram I'm about to take and our hands touch. Our hands linger as long as they're necessary. You've already done more than enough for us. I, I, I mean me. I purposely use a poor old neck as if I made a mistake. 
Let me at least do something. I feel some headache. I clutch my head. Jeez, at least let us do something. Stop being such a stubborn boy. I... Yeah, all right. Sorry, Metamoto. Sound. Thanks for the help. I watch guiltily as the girls clean up. After a few minutes of the room, after a few minutes, the room is clean and the girls hide out, all except for Sayori. She comes in with another mug of warm broth. She puts it down and, sees the, and then sees the others off. I'll see you all tomorrow. She comes back in. I hope you're not mad at me for checking you like that. She says this while checking my forehead. Major's heart rate increases. <laughs> Sayori, what did I say earlier? Are you your best friend? I ruffle her hair. I know you didn't mean any harm by it. You're just looking out for me, and I appreciate it. Is it my fault that you're sick? Why would you think that? Sorry, why do you think it's your fault? I made you give me snacks yesterday, and... Oh, that's not why. I bought that egg sandwich for myself. That one's all on me, all right? Besides, you didn't make me. I wanted to get you snacks, all right? Major begins feeling guilty when he sees her tears. Hug her! For once, I agree with him. But, uh... Ah! I hold her close, stroking her hair gently. No buts, Sayori. It was my mistake that got me sick. Nothing you did caused this. <laughs> okay. I trust you. You're what's best for me, after all. I break the hug. Sayori still looks like she's about to cry. Do you want to watch a movie with me? Good move. Sayori usually likes happy movies. I'm not surprised. Yes. I'd like that. I'll go choose one. I go to the spare bedroom and browse the collection of movies. I come across Ang Lee's movie version of Sense and Sensibility. Perfect. Really? That's the one you're going for. Trust me, I back out to the living room. Sayori's waiting for me. When I show her what I picked, picked up, she smiles. They made a movie? They made a few movies. It's like a famous and old it is a famous book a famous and old book after all. I set up the DVD player and then sit back down. Sayori sits next to me. Halfway through the movie, the door opens and Major's mom walks in. Meiji, how are you feeling? I pause the movie. Better. Not completely back to normal, but better. Meiji's mom then notices Sayori. Oh, hi Sayori. Thanks for checking in on my baby boy. <laughs> no problem, she just said. Meiji's mom is carrying a plastic bag. Inside, she pulls out a large drink. I've got you a sports drink to help you feel better. Have you been eating anything? I had some of that broth throughout the day and then a cupcake from one of Sayori's club members. Club members? I'll explain later, Mom. Alright. What are you watching? Is that... Sense and Sensibility? Yep. Aw, oh, you know I love that movie. She sits on the couch. We can start over if you want. I don't mind either. I reach her mouth. Aw, you're too sweet, but I couldn't do that. I've seen it enough as is. She leans back on the couch beside me. Go ahead. For the next, move, for the next hour, we watch the rest of the movie. I slowly set the drink until it's gone. Meiji even seems to enjoy it. The movie ends around 7 in the evening. Oh no, I gotta get home while I'll be late for dinner. I'll see you to the door, dear. Sayori, thank you for everything you did today. I really did have a, I really did have fun. <laughs> You're welcome. Meiji small walks her to the door where the two say their goodbyes. So, what did Sayori do while I was gone? You said you'd tell me later. Well, it's there. Oh well. Oh, well, I explained everything that's happened. <laughs> That's bold for her, but I'm glad. Your dad and I have been worried about you. You've been in your room a lot more recently. We were scared you'd lose even the one friend you have. I made mom and dad worry too. It's okay, dude, really. I feel my eyes tear up, but I force them down. Well, I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. A pair of motherly arms wrap themselves around me as she strokes my hair lovingly. It's okay, sweetie. I'm just glad you found something new to try. You've got a great mom. She reminds me of my own. She gets a bit annoying and overprotective, but yeah, she's pretty great. They both sit there for a while in comfortable silence. After a while, I open my eyes, and there it is again. There it is again. Not mom, not dad. I like this thing. I really like it a lot. It's nighttime already. I don't remember falling asleep, but I might have. Some of my head is in Mika's lap now. Not sure how that happened. I sit up a bit too quickly and rub my eyes. Mom, well, I'm a bit tired. Is it okay if I go to bed now? Just so long as you don't read more manga and go straight to bed. I promise. Good. I really wanted to take any breakfast, but it's normal. It sounds reluctant to admit that last part. We can do that tomorrow. In the club. Yeah, you're right! He sounds excited. I stand and grab the books. Good night, Mom. She kisses my cheek. I'll check in on you before I leave for work. Mom, I'll be fine. Let me worry, alright? I decide, trying to decide what I can Fine, see you tomorrow. 
Good night, Meiji. Sleep well. I trudge back upstairs, put the books away, and then collapse on the bed. What a long day. You're telling me. So, plans for tomorrow? Uh, it's going on for 40 minutes. I need to end this off soon. I reach into my pocket and pull out Monica's note. We need to talk at your earliest convenience. Love, Monica. Well, looks like we're going to meet with Monica at some point. All right, but when? At our earliest convenience, obviously. I put the note in the bag. Good night. I turn off the light and collapse into the bed. I close my eyes and instantly fall asleep. And that should do it. Yes, Wednesday, October 25th. Okay. Well, with that, I am... Well, not unfortunately. Yeah, I am unfortunately going to have to end it. I'm go ahead and save. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that. If you did, I would really appreciate it if you left a like, maybe a comment, and maybe a subscribe. Again, not necessary at all, or completely optional. I have no problem with it. Also, that alarm is really annoying, but I have no problem with it if you don't. All right? It's, it's fine. It's your choice. It's up to you. I'm a nobody anyway. But with that, I think I'll dismiss this video meeting, and I'll catch all in the next one. Bye-bye.